Okay, Yogesh, so congratulations on completing your transformation. Now, on today's podcast, you know, we got like a very special guest, you know, one of my good friends. I, I actually like to call him a friend because uh, he's on the same level as me. I'm not friends with my clients because you know what they say, yeah? Like, uh, you 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 got to be mean to keep them keen, you know? But uh, yeah. this guy keeps the professional relationship first, but then... Then he lets the friendship and he always respects me as a coach. He is extremely accountable. He's completed his transformation. But the best thing about this guy is he is uh, a men's mental health coach, a life coach, and a relationship coach. Like some of the stuff that he says, like, blows my mind away, basically, you know, because I come from the pickup background. I come from the background of approaching girls by the dozens in industrial quantities, you know, and like literally getting them back home. In the quickest amount, in the quickest way possible. But then, when I went through uh, my own journey, um, I realized like it was actually empty. You know, it didn't really fulfill me, and I began to see women like as uh, as a computer equation. And I wanted, yeah, I wanted my love for them to come back, basically. So I reached out to him on social media, and here we are. Um, he's here with a six pack, and I've got a better relationship with women, basically, right now. So uh, yeah, man. Uh, is is have I given like a good enough introduction or have I missed out anything? You tell me. Yeah. Absolutely great, man. Uh, firstly, I just want to congratulate on your mini transformation as well. Like uh, what we've always interacted, you've you've come across as someone who wants to be very ethical in his dating and relationships, which I really respect. And uh, with regards to my intro, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, uh, helping out men. Uh, seek their transformation whether it's relationship mental health or even uh, through in on their spiritual path is basically what I love doing it's something that I do every day uh, without anyone pushing me for it that's every day you move the physical aspect has to be checked the mental aspect has to be checked and the spiritual as aspect has to be checked if that is done I feel good about myself uh, yeah. aside from working on the business uh I guess that's that's how I look at my life and that's how I move as well. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, no, absolutely love that. And uh, like, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you hosted a seminar, which I was a part of, you know? And um, I can actually say this with complete confidence. I'm not saying this because Yogesh is a client of mine, you know, and I want to, want to help him to grow, but uh, real recognizes real. So it's like when this guy's, when someone is passionate about something, they can talk about it unendlessly without the, without the energy being drained, basically. So when he was explaining to me things about how to fix your relationship towards yourself so that you can be the best version of yourself and you're on a relationship with like the significant other, like when he was explaining the factors that go and check, uh, he was talking unendlessly, basically, with great amount of passion. And he was speaking in a way which was registering into me, which blew my fucking mind away. You know, uh, that's pretty awesome. So could, could you just explain, like, what are the problems that a lot of men these days face? Because we're not going to go down the route of uh, what are the problems that females face? Uh, let's leave, yeah. leave that to the females, basically. You do you. Let's probably look, yeah. at, look, look at us as men, basically. Physically, mentally, yeah. spiritually, as a result of which they either attract the wrong sex or they, no, not, not the wrong sex, uh, but they attract the uh, wrong partner wrong partner like someone who's got like a lot, lot of red red flags or they uh they go into a relationship with low self-esteem where they pedestalize the woman as a result of which it's like the needy thing which is not right for a relationship so like what are the main problems that a lot of men face basically you yeah. know if if i have to just say it in like one one holistic way it's actually no, no don't don't, not... don't consolidate it i want you to split it open like okay. Yeah. Okay, fair. So if 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 I want to if I want to talk about like the major challenges which is ha which are happening right now is say for most people who are single, uh, either they've been scarred, burned by a past relationship, and that's kind of made them, uh, like you know what relationships suck. Fuck that. Uh, women are bad. Women are uh just materialistic, and they're gonna use me and so forth. And there's a lot of pain and angst against women. So yeah. I'm anti women now. So basically. In my belief, I hate them and I'm actually now trying to be with them. So there's that very yeah. uh, resisting, contracting, uh, contrasting energy. Uh, the other aspect, which also has a follow-up spillover of that is trust. So a lot of men are like, I've been burned uh, and I have huge trust issues. So that kind of makes them feel either super anxious 
or checking on them, spying on them, checking their profile and all of it. So that's the trust aspect, which has also hurt because of the past thing. And then there are different situations for different people who, someone who's never had uh, interactions or success with women, he has a whole different problems, like yeah. lacks confidence, things he's not good enough, like very big uh, self-worth issues because he hasn't gotten the external external feedback that yeah. you are desirable. Uh, that is one thing which will like keep him there uh, because once that belief is set, he's always he's always cock blocking himself and he's always thinking I'm not good enough. So that's not yeah. that's also going to mean that he's going to approach less, uh, talk to women less, and not feel worthy. So these are some of the things aside from the major man issue, which I think most men have always been uh, facing, which is commitment issues. Like, yep. can I? Am I? Uh, should I be committed to one person? That's that comes up. A little bit from historically as well, and you'll see it in your life also. Men like novelty, yeah. uh, so I'm I'm with this woman who's beautiful, but there are three other really hot women who's giving <laughs> me attention. I like to do that yeah. as well. So that novelty factor uh, is also coming in. Uh, I guess these are uh, causing commitment issues, and these are basically if you can't be really committed, uh, then. On, honestly, I've had clients who've been in relationships and cheating on their partner. And yeah. <laughs> then after two months of cheating, they're like, now I'm uh, now I'm completely committed to my partner. And then they want to <laughs> go on without yeah. owning it up. So yeah. that's the whole aspect of lying to themselves, which is also a big thing. Like one thing which I like about you is whatever it is, you keep it real. Like be real. Uh, uh, with yourself and you can only keep it real like you've kept it real with me you've kept it real with people because you're keeping it real with yourself right so that is the biggest like i think that is the foundation of everything like keep it real with yourself uh strengthen your inner game once the inner game is set then you attract right partners like for me i'm very sure I cannot attract someone who's uh, uh, incompatible. Like yeah. I won't have an, another toxic relationship because before it becomes a toxic relationship, I am being real with myself. You know, this person's actually a kid who's looking to just uh, still has issues and sorting herself out. Whereas I'm looking for something else. I, I can yeah. be real with myself and do that. So once we develop that skill, uh, there's very less toxicity in a relationship. That doesn't mean every relationship lasts. There might be two people who are keeping it real, but you know, hey, you know, now I think we are very two different people. We're going to move. We're going to split consciously and lovingly, but at least there is less suffering and less drama yeah. and less all of it once you keep it real. Absolutely. Absolutely love that. Now, uh, I'm probably just going to interject and give you some of my personal experience as well, because... Uh, yep. You know, the like people who might be hearing me on this uh, podcast or this video, I don't know how the hell you might be seeing it. You might probably see like, oh, this guy is confident, you know, like uh, he's speaking so fluently on a podcast. Uh, but then uh, I'll just give you like a bit of a brief context about me. I used to have like severe low self-esteem, you know, bullied as a kid, uh, you know, didn't really have a lot of friends, still introverted, you know, I'm an introvert, basically, I just don't like fucking talking to people basically my job requires me to talk to people but i, yeah. I don't like talking to people but um and in like the first girlfriend whom i attracted was extremely toxic first like legit the first one basically As, and that set the foundation for the future relationships and knowing where i live in live in the, which is dubai basically where the gender ratio is skewed uh, that plays a huge factor as well with the girl's mindset around how entitled she's probably going to be you know, the quality of attention that she receives from the guys. And let's face it, like Dubai is a bit of a sugar baby capital in the world, basically, to a certain degree, you know. So um, the that set the frame. And I, I had a lot of hatred to with women, basically, because my experiences were like, okay, she's going to be entitled. She's going to see me as a mark or a sucker from whom I'm probably going to get like free things out of which. And then I developed yeah. all these like, defense mechanisms to like ruthlessly filter out to see if she had red flags or not. And then once when I realized that was a bit of a problem because as a guy, uh, 
when you do go out on dates, I had this experience where I went out on a date and by then I had my shit together. I was working a nice job as a personal trainer, was having like a different girl basically come over every, once every two weeks. You know, I was in good shape. Uh, but then when she'd walk out of my door after the fling, basically, uh, I'd feel empty, if that makes perfect sense, you know. And then yeah. I went out on a date once and then I paid up for the drinks. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go back home, you know. And she's like, what, you think I'm just going to come back home with you just because you paid up for a drink? And she also said, you just look good from the outside, but from the inside, you're pretty shit. You know, so, <laughs> like, um, and that made me realize that I got to do some uh, fixing from the inside, you know. And yeah. so a lot of guys probably think that, okay, I just need to go to the gym. I just need to fix my looks. I just need to get a lot of money. And uh, the right person is going to come along. The right person is yeah. the the right person who's who knows her shit superficially, which is her looks, her money, and her status is probably going to come along. But if you haven't fixed yourself from the inside spiritually, basically, you're not going to attract someone who's like spiritually in check as well. So, what do you have to say to those guys who try to get one against the opposite sex by fixing their looks, their money, their status, but not fixing their inner selves? Like, uh, what's the holistic yeah. strategy basically for guys to become the you know positive masculine man rather than toxic masculine? rather than toxically masculine. Yeah. I don't know if you understood that question. That makes perfect sense. I got it. 100% man. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you, were, when you were saying this, the first thing that came to me was Jim Carrey said this. And Jim Carrey is someone who had remarkable success uh, in the business world, in the acting world. Yeah. And then went, went to become very like a spiritual coach and all of those things. He's, yeah. He does a lot of different things now. Uh, he said that, every man should become super successful and, you know, have all his dreams achieved, then he'll understand that that doesn't make him happy. Absolutely. That, you know, I, and, you know, I, I, I heard this yesterday and I was like, you know, there's a lot of struggle sometimes for your business and, you know, to achieve some level. And I'm like, once I achieve that, that will, then I'll be like complete, you know, as a provider, as a man and so forth. Yeah. And a lot of it is putting a lot of eggs on the external basket. Once this is done, then I'm good enough. So the slippery <laughs> slope is that once we put too much emphasis on the external, uh, that external is is going to change. Like if I if I if you're only focused on building the good physique, making a lot of money, what if you could get get to an accident and you can't go to the gym anymore? Yeah. Uh, is your is your attraction done? Is it done? And a lot of people believe that. A lot of people believe that if something happens to me, my partner is going to leave me because they actually believe their partner is there for them, with them, only mm -hmm. because they hit some external boxes. Yeah. So honestly, I've realized this over the last seven, eight years that the inner game is the key to everything. The inner game is basically feeling worthy inside. Uh, once I feel worthy inside, once I'm good enough inside, once I can actually have joy and peace and yeah. feel great. Everything outside is actually a reflection of the internal world. That's why a lot of people who haven't done the work, they attract toxic things and they keep attracting toxic things and that gives them a negative feedback and they think the same thing and then they attract the same thing. So the, the problem is a lot of those things are right. A lot of those things are true. Hypergamy is true. Women always want to date up yeah, uh, because because women's the major value of uh, females is security. So they want a man who can provide. They 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 shit test you uh, because they want to see if you're good enough. If you if you have a strong a or a frame, mother. strong value system, yeah. And they want someone who's fit. So why do they want someone who's fit, strong? Because they are the weaker sex, which is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone comes in, they want someone to stand up to them, not just physically but mentally as well. Absolutely. So, uh, to take care of them. So that is never going to change. That's in their DNA. That's lodged in our DNA. Uh, but the thing is, all of it is true once it's done with the foundation of the inner game. Like for Absolutely. me, I love going to the gym. I love having the best physique. I love doing that. But it has to come in with the foundation of I go to the gym because I uh, love myself. I take care of this body, this vessel, which has big my soul inside. And mm -hmm. that actually helps me improve my inner game. If I start going to the gym and be like, that guy who's all roided up uh, is 
uh, I want to be like that guy and I'm comparing myself with that and that's why yeah. I'm training or I want that girl and I'm training for that. So automatically when we when we do a lot of things for the external uh, goal, yeah. when that goal is not achieved, we think a whole life was a basically has no meaning and yeah. a whole life was a mistake. So uh, the whole idea is what are we doing here in, in this life? Really, like, this is a very existential question. Like, we all want some meaning to our life. Like, you know, the biggest yeah. thing that plays to some of my clients is, what is your legacy you want to leave? And Absolutely. what is that? It's just that my life had meaning. What I did had purpose. And even what I'm doing right now, I'm here on this podcast, or I'm doing as yeah. a full profession, is because I want that meaning. Like, I've struggled in my relationships they were fuck, fucking dysfunctional i then shifted it and now i understand what's actually my relationship with myself will boost my relationship outside and now i want to help people because it'll help me and that is the meaning which i'll get in my life and i'll live at 80 at 90 whenever i pass away i'll be like damn you know that was a good life lived because i did what my calling was i did what yeah. i really enjoyed doing so we all are looking for that meaning if we focus hyper focus on the external uh the meaning is going to take a huge toll and we're going to live with that regret yeah on our deathbed that fuck, i messed up my life although it's not true like go to the gym eat well uh you want to be with the hottest woman go go for it approach it approach the hottest woman do whatever you want to but do it with that meaning of uh with that thing of the inner game once we do that everything else takes care Absolutely. of itself. Absolutely. And uh, the back of that, basically, like uh, you spoke about hypergamy, basically, like, um, you know, I've been researching about different sexual strategies of men and women. Like the the, the reason why is women, like it, long story short, it's in the nature of women to shit test you. It is what it is. Like, don't ever take it personally. She's going to check yeah. if you're a man or a mouse because the amount of eggs that she produces every year is going to be diminishing as a result of which like sperm or sheep eggs are, eggs are expensive. They don't call me shallow. Mm -hmm. This is biology. So she, when she does find the right person who's going to impregnate her egg with her sperm, she's going to ensure that he's the most suitable prospect. So she's going to check if he's a man or a mouse. And they do this by, I don't know, checking if you're financially sound. They do this by checking if you're physically fit. But they do this by checking if you're em emotionally sound as well. And as a result of which, they might throw a fucking tantrum. I don't, I don't like a tantrum. But when that happens, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's one of this, basically. So as a man, I probably tell a lot of men, like, if she throws a shit test, it's your opportunity to shine. Why, why are you pissing or moaning about this? But then if she throws yeah. way too much of it, way too often, then that's toxic. Then that's dramatic. You don't want someone like that around, basically. Yeah? Uh, Absolutely. She, she's going to challenge you to bring the man out of you in a good way. Cool. You know? Now, uh, like, that, that's before I often tell men, basically. I'm like, be prepared for this shit. The second thing that I often tell men, like, women is, um, like, He's a man. He's always he'll always want more sexual variety. That's in his DNA because his biological thing is to spread his sperm so that his offspring survives. Survival of the spirit, uh, fittest that's for Darwin, basically. Yeah, but then the yeah. sheer fact that he suppresses his own sexual strategy to be with you, you know, not because he needs you, because he wants you. That's the best place a man can probably be in, basically. You know, the sheer yeah. like he's got six figures, basically. He can get any girl that he wants, basically. He can, um, he's charming, but he's still there with you. Like, I tell man, you want to be in that position, you know? Because not only that's going to get the other person to give her best to you, she's probably going to go like, he can get anyone he wants, but he's, he's going to be with me. So I might as well give my best as well. I might as well bring my A game as well, which is amazing. You know, it's like a really good place to be in. So as men, you've got to be in that position. Yes, do go to the gym. Yes, do take your finances and check. Not from a place of uh, getting the hottest girl, but from a place of being your best self. Just to satisfy yourself, basically, internally. Like, yes, I am the shit, basically. But, you know, so that, that's actually cool. That's actually pretty awesome. Um, but also, don't forget to nail yourself emotionally. You know, don't forget to, like, have, have your this in check, basically. So that's pretty awesome, you know. Now, uh, yeah. Oh, one thing that I want to, one thing that you mentioned is you want to do things from a place that transcends you, you know, now, by I'll give you my example. Uh, I used to work in a, in a British company and uh, as a trainer and I was better than the other coaches out there, but I was not given my privilege. 
Yeah, because yeah. Well, my skin color, my accent, which I worked really hard to change it right now. Uh, but then that got my blood boiling and they would probably take a piss on me. They would probably uh, take a piss on the fact that, oh, I just coach Indians. And that was pretty painful. And yeah. I don't know, whenever you speak to me and whenever this topic comes up, it gets my blood boiling. I speak with a, with a lot of passion and anger, basically. When people say, yeah. don't get in shape because you're Indian. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm probably going to prove you wrong, basically. So on one end, I'm just an online body transformation coach. But on the other end, my life's mission is to help people who think they've got shit genetics because of this limiting belief system. Do you think that that's my purpose? By, by purpose, something that transcends you? Do you think what yeah. I'm trying to do is something like this? As per you? Yeah. Uh I didn't know this story, by the way. So that's uh, really powerful. And uh, you know what I, what I think? Uh, a lot of the pain we have felt in our life uh, yeah. is the catalyst to be be the change. And then uh, by being the change to create the change in the world. Yeah. So uh, for me, anything, the transcending part comes in when we are changing the who of the person. See, a lot of people are selling to change the what. You know, oh, uh, you want to change your abs? I'll help you change the abs. You want to change your, you want to get more women? I'll get you, I'll get more women. Da, da, da. I'll, I'll do this for you. I'll do this for you. I'll do this for you. It's all changing the what, 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 what. But for me, the cream and the most exciting part is in changing the who of the person. If you change the who of the person that, you know what, you're a guy who can have like the best best physique and actually do competitions and actually be crazy perform brilliantly despite whatever you think yeah. you're actually changing the who of who they are the whole identity is shifted Absolutely. once the identity is shifted everything shifts like you know uh they they can get the abs they want they can get the physique they want they can actually uh get the women they want they can actually go hit the business which they want everything uh, is shifted when that who is shifted and that's basically my endeavor as well like that's why I only want to take on clients who are very excited about working with me because that that's when I can actually go the deepest and yeah. change the whole identity of who they are and that's your mission as well so once you have that mission that is always your driving force that's your fuel when you feel off when you have a bad day and all of yeah. it that mission or vision has to be the fuel behind what you do. Absolutely. And uh, like, I'm, I'm just making speculations and it's wrong for me to assume about someone, but I've got, yeah. I've got a pretty good rapport with you. We've chilled a yeah. couple of times. So uh, you, but when you were telling me, I help guys like Ted Mosby, you know, and for the listeners out yeah. there, you know, you must have seen How I Met Your Mother. Now, someone like me, my personal opinion is that Ted Mosby was a bit of a weasel. No offense, by the way. I'm just talking as openly as possible. Because th th that guy yeah. would often lead the other person off on. He'd be indecisive. And um, he he'd probably be a bit feminine, per se. But you were telling yeah. me that you used to be someone like that, basically, back in the day. Yeah? Absolutely. And yeah. now when you look at your old self, there's that icky or cringy feeling, like how lame I used to be. You know? But then... Uh, I don't. I don't know if you feel that way, but when I look at my old yeah. self, I used to be a bit of a geek. You know, it used to be icky or cringy. But when I probably see yeah. someone in that same position, I feel that empathy. You know, yeah. and I, I'm like, okay, I want to help that. So, do you think that's your purpose to help a lot of dead Mosby, basically, which transcends absolutely? Because you're just a, yeah, you're specifically. With all your respect, you're just a relationship and and a life coach. Everybody's a relationship and a life coach. But then your niche, you know, your life's purpose is to probably help a lot of dead Mosby's. You know, that's what you yeah. do with passion, if I'm not mistaken. Abs absolutely. So think about it. Uh, like Ted Mosby, from one perspective, was the nice guy, right? Yeah. Uh, the nice guy will, uh, if he's, if the nice guy is put in a power situation, like he looks good and he has that sway over the women, he is going to lead them on because he's so indecisive. The nice guy is also a uh doesn't believe he's actually good enough so he's sabotaging that as well and trying to make it happen as well and chasing them as well so it is very uh confusing and stressful and that's the reason why i don't think i feel that ick with that uh, regarding a question regarding my own thing honestly when you were talking about your experience in that british gym and so forth 
I believe, and this is something which we spoke of in during my workshop as well, right? Like the yep. first step towards having good relationships is actually healing the past. So uh, healing the past requires us to heal the heart and there's a lot of pain there. So a lot of what you do is because you've had the pain or you've had the bad experiences, yep. I've had the rejection or the girl who I was talking to dating, now speaking to my best friend and now dating him and all of those jazz. Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah. The idea is to actually forgive that. So uh, five years back, I would feel so much anger because I didn't know the rules of the game. I didn't show up in the right way. I could have said the right thing. And that girl who I really was into would have actually been in a relationship with me as well. But uh, I just see it as, for me personally, how I go with it is everything that happened with the past I had no, I have no control over it. I had no control over it. And it's basically the higher power, his will. So I, my job is to accept the past. I think that's the best strategy to heal the past is to accept the past. Yeah. Now the, the, the only challenge is, as I was telling you at the start of the podcast is if someone is heartbroken and been scarred with that woman and actually doesn't like those women, and he's now trying to date those women, he's going to have, he's not going to have success with it. Because he actually deep down, down inside hates them. So once you remove that, once you forgive that past, once you heal that for you personally as well, if you want to train British clients, if you want to train different clients, healing that bit will actually help you open up yeah. yourself to new clients. And you can't do that if you have that anger and you can still have, you can still have this mission and vision that, you know what? South Asian genetics, I can get you the best body as well as uh, coach the other clients. There yeah, is yeah. no like only this and that. So that's basically yeah. something which is coming up very strongly for me. That's why I don't feel the ache anymore because I've kind of accepted that and it's a constant journey. It's like today I'm in a good space, but there's there might be something else that's triggering me tomorrow and it's a constant journey to keep healing the past and forgiving yeah. it. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I absolutely love this, man. And uh, this this is awesome. You know, with regards to this, I'll, I'll just give you like a bit of a backstory. So I used to be the only Indian trainer amongst like uh, 20, 20 English trainers in a British company, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So it was it was not the clients. It was uh, it was basically the culture. The trainers. Yeah, yeah, the culture. Yeah. And like the Indian culture is more of like this. Uh, you don't enjoy you just work 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 <laughs> yeah and then years later like you either become an alcoholic or you become you start eating shit and you end up with cholesterol diabetes or sugar and you die okay so that that's the background where, where i came from so when i joined this company it was like a bit of a culture shock for me as a result of yeah. which um it was very difficult for me to adapt things and and like pe people were like you know, not accepting of me because I was a really good trainer. I still am a really good trainer, but uh, they have the accent, the presentability, et cetera, on their end, basically. And back then, my accent was not on my end. And we, we unfortunately live in a world where the way you present yourself, the way you speak in a particular accent, people do make an impression about you. It is what it is, you know? So, yep. um, and I unintentionally changed it. I worked really hard on the way I looked, et cetera. So when I did come out of it, I did attract a lot of clients from the international market, but then there was already a dislike towards them or my colleagues would make me feel that I would be inferior as a result of which I would dislike my own people. But then I was having a chat with my mom like a few years ago about this. And she's like, if you dislike your clients, where they come from, or if you dislike your own people or something like that, people can sniff it in the first 11 seconds you know one seventeen Absolutely. second you know and yeah. this brings me to the to the fact that woman so i had to fix and heal myself basically around my relationship yeah. with my people or because of the past trauma that i went to or around my relationship with the client from the international market with the past trauma that i went to and now when i speak to people yeah. i might sound blunt i might sound real but then people can sniff out the fact that this guy genuinely wants to help he cares that's why he's being planned, yeah. basically. But uh, yes. this brings me to the question that you can't bullshit human beings, yeah? Especially women. And as I hate to put women in this category, but women and animals, basically, have like a sixth sense 
whether the person means well or whether the person doesn't mean well. But dudes probably just look at things on face value and logic. But women Absolutely. can really sniff out emotions. By that I mean, if you're a guy with low self-esteem, even if you approach her with the most positive uh, connotation, you know, uh, yeah. hey, you're really nice. But if she sees that you're resentful, you hate yourself from the inside, you've got a negative attitude towards the world, straight up it's going to be pussy repellent, basically. You know? Yeah. So uh, how, how, like, what's your take do you think women can actually sniff on the fact that you heal yourself? Absolutely. Uh, women, uh, it's simple. So women, uh, the operating space of a man is in the mind space, in the head space. So therefore, yeah. they are like making judgments from the head. Okay. Oh, look at him. He looks this way. And they are very more, much more visual from that perspective. Women's operating space is in the heart space uh, and the emotional space. And therein, actually, there is a lot of there are a lot of superpowers, synchronicities. Uh, that's why women are, have a huge adva- advantage in relationships. You yeah. think you have to approach them, but really, actually, when forget approaching, like when when actually whenever I've had a relationship, right? It's actually the women who's subconsciously giving me the hints. Like they there yeah. is a <laughs> theory where they yeah, yeah. drop the earring or something of that sort. They are actually calling the shots. They are actually leading it. So uh, she can sense it. Uh, that's a superpower. Uh, uh, she can sense uh, yeah. someone who is uh, emotionally in 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 has a shit in order, has good yeah. self worth, uh, and all of those things. Uh, unfortunately, even women today are trying to be more masculine. Yeah. So the problem is that a lot of us are. Uh, shifting our own mindset and not actually believing in our own self. So also women are getting, trying to be more masculine, getting their head messed up and their biochemistry messed up with social media, all of those whatever shit is happening out in the world getting all of that imagine putting like a bunch of uh, viruses and other foreign objects in a system which has a beautiful scanning and works really well. Now you have a lot of false information, false negatives, false positives that kind of makes the whole system not trusted as much. Absolutely. So as much as I'd like to say that women have that huge power, that advantage is being absolutely yeah. given away because of a lot of shit from outside. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I absolutely love this. Now, but then uh, yeah, uh, as the listeners know, I come from a pickup background. I used to approach girls basically I still learn how to do this down to down to a science basically and uh, like what I also want to say is uh, what was that what was that what was I gonna say yeah men men don't cannot do not have that sixth sense you know like the way women have like that emotional scanning ability which women have basically yeah yeah uh, how, how do I say this that cliche stereotype where another woman is probably gonna tell another woman I, you know, in that really subtle tonality and the woman is going to go like, ooh, that bitch. I'm like, what? She just told you hi. She's like, no, she yeah. said hi. In, yeah. Did you see the way she said? <laughs> no. Uh, but w- women can do all of that. You know, or let's probably say yeah. I, with, with an ex-girlfriend, I went to a party and there was a man who was talking to this other lady who was just talking and my ex-girlfriend was like, you know, they both are, they both are fucking. You know, I'm like, how the hell do you know? They're just talking. You know, so women have that yeah. thing basically, but men don't yeah. really have that thing because men, men, men's uh, lot of like operating system is logic, whereas women's operating system is seeing beyond the lines, sub communication, emotional. But then yeah. women don't have that logical strength, you know, to go beyond the emotions. This is just a generic stereotype. Nobody get triggered basically. But let's probably say I'll give you an example. My 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 bottleneck in my business is sales. I'm getting obsessed with sales right now at the moment. I'm learning that shit every day. Yeah, yeah. and sales yeah. requires me to look at the person's body language. It, it requires me to look at the way the person feels. You know, that's what I'm trying to get better at. But then I have the logic to understand that okay, it's just a numbers game. I just need to put the reps in. I just need to learn the model. I just need to study tonality. I just need to master body language, and boom, it's going to be fine. But then, yeah women are going to be so emotional that the negative feelings of I'll think about it, I'll talk to my wife, which just comes as an objection towards the end of a sales call. 
it's it's going to be so elevated in her physiology, like the feeling of rejection is going to be so elevated that she's not going to have the logical solution that tells her it's just a matter of you putting in the reps. So they can't override the lot, the emotional side of things. So can you just explain a little more around that, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you actually explained it perfectly. Uh, once you were talking about it, a lot of uh, reasons why I don't do very well with sales is that because... I've actually worked on, so I, I'm a big believer of having that balance between feminine and masculine energy. Yeah. And that feminine energy is the foundation with which I can actually have all of these values and have have a lot of clarity and actually learn body language. A lot of, as a coach, uh, I'm, I'm also putting up on that skill, uh, building up that skills of actually catching what's happening and being intuitive and so forth. And that's actually caused me personally to be, uh, very worn down uh, when a rejection happens in a sales meeting and yeah. uh, all of that. So uh, I, I'm actually just speaking from a personal experience. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm equipped or uh, the right person to comment on women and sales and that process. But 100% what I've seen is that women can actually connect with someone more easily because they directly go in the heart space. You see two women who... Uh, start off like meet for the first time we'll actually talk about their periods they'll talk about uh, menstrual issues or we'll yeah, talk yeah. about anything on right off the bat and go to the washroom and speak so the connection is very quick and also the whole apart uh, is very quick because they are very sensitive to any negative feedback yeah uh, so I, I i would say from my perception that would give them more opportunities to do a lot of sales now uh uh, managing those emotions, I think that's that's the skill yeah. and that's the work you do, right? But they don't have the the. That's where the disadvantage is. There, they don't have the logic to see that as a skill. Yeah. Okay. That so, that could be that could be one thing. However, the information is out there. There are no secrets in the world anymore, right? Yeah. Everything that is to be said to be learned is there. So uh, the moment they can get the awareness that, hey, I have actually a big superpower here uh, and I just need to learn the skill and then do it. And then they, they are able to do it. And there are a lot of successful women entrepreneurs and think they are Absolutely. doing that. Uh, they manage those emotions. Yeah. Wish I had that. Uh, I had to treat learning body language and all of that as a skill. You know? So, yeah. But yeah. Uh, guys, I'm going to wrap this up, you know, and I'm going to put in a cheeky upsell by my good friend right here. You know, for a lot of dudes who overwork themselves up, who have been, I don't know what what type of people you work with, man. You know this better, man. Put in, put in, a, put in an upsell. I'll leave this up to you. What type of people do you work uh, with? Uh, the people who I work with, uh, people who actually go through a heartbreak, very, very typical guy, uh, gone through a heartbreak, been scarred in relationships, and now isn't doing enough to actually change that. So it could be, uh, the inner beliefs, inner confidence, all of those things are stopping him to take yeah. that step. Or he's working on that, but he's not actually having dates. He's not actually having uh, taking action uh, with regards to it. So whether it's the inner game or the accountability of action outside, once you marry both of them and understand the rules of the game, understand yourself, you can fucking kill it in the relationship yeah, space. You whether you see, want see more dates... You can do some yeah, whether damage. you want more dates, you want to do serious damage, or you want that long-term partner yeah. and like you know start a family, be settled. Whatever your your yeah. poison is, not, not not my thing to judge, but you can actually attain that. There's no nothing stopping you from attaining it. You just need to take the first step and you know ask Absolutely. for help. Absolutely, uh, guys and girls. You know I, I'm gonna put Yogesh's Instagram in the bio. You need any help. Send him a message. He's your man. He's probably going to help you. If you're a girl, if you're a guy, man's a life coach, man's a relationship coach, man's a mental health coach as well. You know, and it's not that he's uh, recently graduated and he's done a life coach degree at the age of 20 and he's uploading a selfie of himself with a baby face. This guy's 38. He knows his shit. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah. You, uh, you guys, is there anything else that you want to add or we good? Okay, I mean, you're going off right now at the moment. You're frozen.